uh, something I've done is uh, I have taken all of the pans and to not confuse it I did one by one so I would take the wrapper off stick it on here and then write the number as soon as I did that on each pan so that way they all are numbered and if ever I want to take them all out um, from all of my palettes I'll have to go through the other ones as well and do the same thing um, and then just put them in, in the right order or shuffle them or create separate color palettes I can easily take them out and then find what they are uh, by looking at this if I didn't want to go online to do that okay so for my brush I will be using the quill by Jackson's love the brush and let's start swatching so the first one I'm just going to have my sheet right here so I can read up so 117 is Pompeii Red I had to um, open the window because it just got so hot here I literally couldn't breathe anymore so once again apologies for the chit chat outside um, Cyprus burnt amber really really have grown to love um, oh wow look at that oh wow that's beautiful Yes, so I really have grown to love Roman Schmalz watercolors. I'm just looking for a rag. Uh, I hope they're not going to swear anything and they'll be caught on camera. Builders tend to do that. Okay, I'll find out when I'm editing, I guess. Right, so next color we have is Mummy Transparent Red. So that's 237. Bunch of gorgeous neutrals. Um, you'll notice that I don't have any bright colors here. These are quite bright as they are for neutrals, but none of the pinks or none of the blues. That's because I already have um, a good selection, I felt like. Um, 239 is Caput Mortem. Love me some Caput Mortem. Oh, yes, so Caput Mortem, very, very pigmented. So I'm just gonna lift it to be able to see the color. So, with loads of water, it's a very pretty color. It's like a aubergine color. Um, right, I think I might need to close the window soon. Transparent Oxide Brown. So this one has a little bit of a coating and I've been told before that this is a bit of like wax residual just on some of the pans, some of the colors. I would assume it has something to do with the certain pigments used um, because yeah, I work with watercolors with pigments and I have learned the hard way that all of, well, some of the pigments are quite different from others. So... Uh, don't go in working with watercolors or creating your watercolors thinking, oh, this batch worked perfectly fine and I'm going to create a new color and it's going to be exactly the same. No. Oh my goodness me. Wow. So 241 is transparent oxide brown. Oh, wow, wow. My God. Hmm. I... I'm honestly so in love with these colors that I feel like writing to Roman Schmaltz and just telling them how over the years I have really enjoyed the quality and the and the pigments. Once you start working with pigments, which I didn't do un, until a few years ago, you don't appreciate maybe as much how hard it is to create a good color and actually what goes into having these stunning colors. You can only create them by high quality pigments and being 
very generous as a watercolor maker and not stingy with your pigments um, and that will result in these beautiful colors so a lot, of, a lot of hard work goes into it a lot right so that was Payne's gray next one deep green gold and that's a three four three I love me some green gold so I do have the um, green gold which oh no, is pretty how pretty is it next to the Payne's gray and again I didn't think of this as a color palette when ordering these colors but they look lovely together so where is my green gold this one here it's hard to say at the minute so let's let it dry a bit and then we'll see how the deep green gold compares to the other one okay next one we've got three four five and this one is olive green light Oh, this is beautiful, very beautiful. How gorgeous are these greens? They're right up my alley, perfect botanical greens. More on a neutral side. Three, five, one, transparent brown. So this one also has that bit of wax coating but basically what you need to do is just work your brush on it and it will come off so it's starting to come off now you'll see little bits of something floating but that's just what needs to come off there and that's it I think once you've taken it off it's not going to be there anymore sometimes it can be a little bit stubborn but There's these little bits floating on top, don't know if you can see. But I'm just taking it off with a brush and that's it. Okay, I don't want to waste any more watercolour, so I'm going to go into that. So, transparent brown. So it's like a reddish brown. Very nice. It's actually very close to the color that I said in the beginning I was looking for, like a um, neutral red. It's more on a brown side, but very close to that. Um, I think a touch of magenta, just tiny little bit. It would be the color that I was looking for, but very beautiful as it is. 355, we have transparent pyrrole. Orange. Oh dear. What is going on? Okay, so this one is the transparent Pyrrol Orange. Okay, so this one is actually very similar to the other oranges I already have. Uh, but it's okay. Um, ginger red. Now this looks interesting, doesn't it? Looks really interesting in the pan, and it's three six eight. So it also has that paper. I think what it is is that when they sometimes layer the paper, so this paper here, where is it? So this paper, um, maybe it has like a bit of a coating or something on there. And that goes on to the watercolour, but it's only a few of the colours that have it, not all of them. And some of them are easier to take off than others. So, that will do. Okay, last colour. Oh my gosh, this one is stunning. It actually, as it's drying, it's looking more and more like the colour I wanted to get. And... As you can see on here, it doesn't look anything like here in terms of vibrancy. So um, the way I use my watercolors tends to be more saturated. So uh, it's good to do your own swatches. So if you get something before you even unwrap and you think, oh, that's not what I was hoping for, 
wait until you actually do your own swatch on your own paper with your own brush so here we go this is nice very very um, what's the best word to describe it it's got that opacity to it and I can tell it will be very granulating all right so that's the watercolors I'm going to label them and carry on with the mixed media so let's move on to mixed media now so we've got the Senator oil pastel and we've got these paints here so the white one, I don't think there's any point of me swatching it to die. Or in fact, okay, let's do it. I'm gonna just do an indigo swatch here. And then once it's completely dried, I'm going to try the woody on it just to see how it sort of would pick up. And that's how I would use it in my art. So let's just do a really dark swatch here and then play around with it. Okay. Indigo seems to have dried, so let's try the Stabila Woody, Woody on it. And this is a white, but I'm trying to see if there's any... No, it doesn't say anything on here. So, that's the... That's the white, I think. It's white enough and it seems very soft definitely has a crayon feeling to it and because it's big you could cover a large area really quickly I actually like that it's not you know super 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 white you can still see a little bit of color through it so I do yeah, it feels good and then obviously it's water soluble so if you wanted to you could try and melt the color as well obviously it's picking up the watercolor underneath but if you did it over acrylics or something like that then you could get a different effect so that's the woody okay next one let's try the oil pastel Oh yes, this is beautiful, exactly like what I remember. So imagine this color next to here. Okay, so I got interrupted there a little bit. Um, yeah, so this is the blue chromium green. And like I was saying, it's such a lovely color to have next to these sort of neutrals and oranges. Really pops well. So, I do like this colour a lot. Next one, let's do the Cobalt Blue. And this is the Fluid Acrylic. So, firstly, you'll need to take off this little bit here. This little foil. Oh, a bit tricky with long nails okay so then the lid goes back back on and now I can squeeze it out I'll just use one drop so when you water it out you can get this watercolor effect but then you can also have it quite creamy and you see it's a beautiful bright color very sort of glowing and pretty I'm just going to take a bit of water off just to showcase the color variety 
So here, it you know, really looks like watercolour. No one would be able to tell that this is acrylic paint, in fact. So that's that. And this was again cobalt blue. What a gorgeous colour. And then I will prep these, which basically, if you've never seen these before, what you need to do when it comes to oil sticks is there is a film here which you need to take off. So you'll find a perforated little strip somewhere. Oh, here it is. And pull that off. Like so. And sometimes the skin comes off with the film. So then you don't need to do anything because this part can be messy. So I'm going to put this one up here. And then the next one. I'll do all of them and then I'll come back for swatching. So you have an option of keeping these plastic sleeves that come in, in them, but personally I don't like doing that, but it helps with the smell if you're a bit sensitive. Some of them can feel a little bit, a bit strong and um, depending on the color, but mostly they just have like a mild scent to them, but if you're very sensitive probably you'd be best, uh, it'd be best for you to keep them in these and that could be one way. For me personally, this is how I like to work with them. When I'm working with them and they are open, so unprotected like this, then I like to keep them upright. And once they have dried up and formed a film again, because that's what will happen in a couple of days, then I keep them this way, so on top of one another. And if they get a bit dusty, for, to me that's not a problem because I will end up taking the top layer off uh, anyhow and so that's how I do it. So sometimes you end up in a situation where the film hasn't fully been taken off so then you just need to peel that off like that and that's it and then you can use it. And sometimes you'll end up in a situation where it just opened a little bit but uh, the film is still intact. So then same thing, you'll just need to do that. Sometimes I use, um, I use like a tweezer if I don't want to get my nails dirty. Because these are not as easy to wash off if you get a bit of paint on there. So it really depends on every pigment separately so with tweezers it can be easier to remove the film and then the tweezers you can wipe easily as well like so there we go This extra bit of time that you use is totally worth it. And in fact, you don't need to peel everything off. You could just peel off the corner that you're going to use. Okay, so now let's focus on the color. So the first color I have here is the raw amber. They're very, very juicy. And then what I would do is just see if I can get a nice color. Some of them are very, very lovely. You can pull out beautiful colors. And then we have, what's this one again? Ultramarine blue. Yeah, that's a beautiful ultramarine. In the past, I used to use my finger and then I stopped doing that because I think, you know, maybe it's not very good for you to touch oil paints. So now I tend to use your spatulas like so. 
So what's good about these is that you can create that oil paint texture. So if I lay it quite thickly like this with a bit of texture, that's how they're going to dry. It will take a couple of days, but uh, you will be able to have a lovely oil painting result from it. Okay, and so this one is the cobalt blue. Yeah. Okay. So let me title them and then I'll come back and show you the texture of this beautiful blue. Okay, so let's have a look. And here are all the swatches. So in terms of texture, um, if you layer the, oops, I made a mistake, so these two are the reversed order. So the Golden Fluid Acrylic in Cobalt Blue. Um, if you use the fluid acrylics quite thickly, then you'll have this uh, nice kind of glossy finish to it. If you water it out, you can get these beautiful deep um, tones and then with more water, it literally looks like watercolor. And in this case, it's got a bit of granulation as well. And that's probably because it's a cobalt. And then moving on to Sanadia oil sticks right here. The raw amber for a nice neutral dark tone, um, it's, it's interesting. And then we have the two blues. So if you can see, I wonder if you can see the texture right there. Um, basically, this is how it's going to dry. And with the oil pastels, nothing sort of, um, or the oil sticks rather, it doesn't shrink as it dries. So this texture that you can see here, how you leave it is how it's going to be dry. And then later on you could go over with a finger and it'd be, you know, dry feeling and have a lovely texture. Um, at the minute, if I do that, it just will kind of just smudge very easily because they're super creamy. So while they're wet, just, you know, ensure that you don't move things around it. They're a lot sort of wetter than the um, oil pastels by Sanelli as well. So it's a lot of fun, but just keep in mind that uh, you'll have to wait maybe a day or two days. Sometimes it's three days, depending on the actual color. They sometimes have a slight difference in drying times. Yeah, then you could go over with other mediums, for example, like the Stabilo Woody um, pencil or crayon and do a bit more work. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed these lovely colors that I have added to my um, art supplies. And I'm looking forward to be introducing these blues to my color palette. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.